So welcome back everybody. This week's video looks like it's going to be a little bit different than the normal videos. I just really can't think of anything around here that would be super interesting to film. So I think what I'm going to do is just take y'all along on the little projects that need to be done around here this week. There are several little things that really need to be done and I'm just going to kind of take y'all along and uh, see where it goes. The first thing we need to do is do a little bit of work on this old Jeep. So guys, y'all have seen this Jeep on the channel before, but what y'all might not have known about it is is that uh, it was actually converted to run off of propane. Somebody was building it into a rock crawl and of course propane pressurized fuel is better on angles of course than gasoline and a carburetor is. So what I have done is I have yanked all of the propane stuff off of it and we're gonna put it back to gas. This is the original tank and this tank was not in the greatest of shape. I had quite a bit of rust on the inside. I took it and cleaned it out as best I could. Got it stripped on the inside of muriatic acid and uh, patched the pinholes that I could find. And for a beater Jeep, I think it'll work okay for now. All right, guys, so a couple of things here. I wanted to uh, just kind of show you this. This project has really shown me the value of just having a supply of, you know, miscellaneous, oop, there we go, miscellaneous nuts and bolts and stuff like that on hand. I was able to mount that gas tank in there just with what I had laying around. You know, this stuff's not perfect. It's most of it's used or a lot of it's used, but you got the job done and it's, it's fine. So these are just jars of nuts and bolts that my dad actually gave me from his collection that he's stored up over the years. And these have just proved completely invaluable in this little project. But something I wanna open right now is a carburetor for this for the Jeep here. I've got the old original Rochester uh, Monojet carburetor that goes with it. And I made a, a uh, attempt to rebuild it, but the kit that I had didn't have all the parts that I needed. So I just went and bought a just a generic carburetor and I hope that it hope that it fits. I hope that it works. And it appears to be a match, so I think we'll be okay. There we go. Uh, but this is not the original engine that went in this Jeep. This is a 250 cubic inch uh, Chevrolet or GM engine. And I believe that it was on an old uh, Pontiac uh, Firebird or something from the 60s, maybe 69 or so.
But what could happen? It could explode. No, it's not going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> it needs some work.
tragedy. I wouldn't consider myself the greatest gardener in the whole world, but this is my corn patch. This is the last corn patch for the year, and the other corn patches that we had were really not that great. Um, but this patch, it's Silver Queen, and man, it has been amazing. Look at how tall, those, those things, those are things are probably seven feet tall and it's got tons of ears on it. I have been fertilizing it and watering it and I've just, they have just taken off and they are beautiful. I've been keeping the squirrels out of it as best I could and it's just been great. And it's almost harvest time and last night a group of raccoons came in here and just got fat. They just really got fat. So I'm gonna go around and um, pick what I can before they come back tonight. Yes, it's tough to complain though. That's still a pretty good haul. I'm gonna have to install an electric fence for next year. All right, so it's Thursday morning and uh, we're gonna get on the tractor. My uncle lives next door. He's been clearing out his property. We're gonna go help him pile some brush.
All right, so uh, yesterday we finished up mowing the field and if you notice, I didn't mow the whole thing. I just kind of mowed around the edges. That's because in the middle, I'm planning on putting a food plot in there and now we're gonna go out and we're gonna spray and kill all that junk that's out there so we can go ahead and put a, put a, put a wow, put a, food, put a food plot in. You can see in the background, the Jeep's over here. Uh, it's running really good. My dad came over and helped me work out a couple little things on it. Well, right now it's got a small radiator leak that I'm trying to resolve. Plus, um, there's a tire that perpetually goes flat that I've got in town having a tube put in. So that's why we see that looking kind of rough in the background there. So this is a 50 gallon tank. So we're gonna mix in a gallon of generic Roundup. That should be good, two and a half, about two and a half ounces of Roundup per gallon of water is sufficient. So we're gonna put a gallon of Roundup in there. And I'm hoping that that's gonna be enough for that big field as well as a smaller field that I would like to put a food plot in this year. Get that good and mixed in there. I borrowed this spray tank from a friend and it's gonna be invaluable in getting this done. Ordinarily, I've got a, uh, an ATV spray tank. It's about 27 gallons and I have used it for this purpose before, but man, it is, it is, it takes a really long time and I don't like driving the four wheeler slow like that because it gets hot and uh, it's just not a really good setup. I want to show you all this before we get too much farther. Uh, that, that seems kind of conservative to me. It feels, it feels a whole lot hotter out here. So this is the field where we were cutting yesterday. And if you see, you know, right over here, we kind of want the edges of the field not to be planted. We just want that regular grass. And right in here is where we want to put the food plot. We actually planted this field as a food plot back in the spring. And we tried a no-till method. I thought that there was enough organic material down and dead uh, to create a decent enough um, a decent enough uh, bed for the seed, uh, but it, it just did not happen. Very, very few of the seeds actually came up. And needless to say, I'm, I'm not gonna try the no-till method ever again, unless I have some kind of a, a seed drill or something like that. A cultipacker probably would have helped, but uh, anyway, it was a failure. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna spray this side in preparation for planting. Um, and I'll come back once it's dead and once we get some rain and uh, uh, and see about tilling it up with the hair. But once we sprayed last time uh, and nothing came up, this is the stuff that came up. And I'm not really sure what this stuff is right here. It's some kind of some kind of broadleaf plant, but it came up uh, very prolifically in this field. I'm, I'm pretty sure the Roundup will kill it without too much without too much trouble. But I thought that was interesting. That just kind of came up. I've never really seen a lot of this stuff out here.
So we were able to get the field finished uh, with the spray, but there was a pretty serious leak, and I was afraid this was gonna be the case, but there was a pretty serious leak in this, what is this, a regulator? I'm not really sure. Um, but it was leaking pretty badly out of this housing, this, this plate right here, and it undoubtedly has, has frozen at one point because it's cracked, bulged out and cracked just a little bit. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to try something, just a quick fix, and hope that it happens. This will be a pretty good test, I guess, but we're going to fix this crack with JB Weld. And if this does, I mean, what I have to lose, quite honestly, and if this doesn't fix it, uh, then, I'll, then I'll get a new one. I think this will be a pretty interesting test for JB Weld also. I, you know, I've used this stuff here and there for various things, and it's pretty good stuff. Um, but the claims on the package are pretty, pretty astronomical. I did read a story or hear one time about a guy who patched a block in a uh, bulldozer, a Caterpillar bulldozer, with this stuff. Saved a several thousand dollar repair, and it worked fine. Of course, to be fair, that could have been on a package of JB Weld where I read that. So there it is. There's my quick little repair. We'll let it sit overnight and try it out tomorrow and see what happens. So I got done with that field and I had a little left, so I decided to mix up more and just put another coat on everything. And um, I'm gonna have to give it to JB Weld on this one. It's probably 99% uh, improved on this leak. It does drip a little tiny bit when you first start it up. And we can see that there's still a little bit of wetness up under there, but I would say 99% better. Yesterday it was just gushing out and I was losing most of my spray right out of this regulator right here. So, um, yeah, that was that was well worth well worth the uh, the challenge, I guess you could say. Saved a lot of money and a lot of time taking this thing apart. So, very very pleased with it. Good job, good job on JB Weld.